not only was I able to like lose the weight and feel like myself again, but it like turned down the volume on my brain's craving for all of these things that I didn't need. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathleen Jordan. I'm Chief Medical Officer at Midi Health, where we support women in achieving their best health in midlife. Some of this includes many conversations on nutrition and fitness. So I'm here with Lindsay, Millie, and Willow. What's been your biggest challenge in midlife? I was just always told, you're just getting old. It's a mm. part of the aging yeah. process. You know, your, your metabolism kind of goes to sleep for a while and you got to make sure you keep it revved up at all times. Yeah. I went back to being a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, certainly from... Um, a biological perspective, like eating the carbohydrates boosts your serotonin. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I was almost self-medicating with like baked goods. <laughs> and so I just got stuck in this loop and I had a really hard time getting out of that. What I was doing wasn't working. Like I could run a 5k every single day. I could eat you know, a certain amount of the same things that I was eating or just one little treat would just throw me off. And the weight gain was like a huge challenge. Do you feel like you need something different now than you did before? Yeah. I got on a GLP-1. That's mm -hmm. been really, it's been significantly helpful. Does everybody know what a GLP-1 is? I was about to ask. The new weight drugs. The new yeah. weight drugs. Mm -hmm. Now I'm also on a GLP-1, a semaglutide. And not only was I able to like lose the weight and feel like myself again, but it like turned down the volume on my brain's craving for all of these things that I didn't need. Mm -hmm. But I'm still able to like sit at the table and eat dinner with my family. I'm just not eating as much. Or I made my husband had like a pint of ice cream out. He's like, do you want some? And I had like a spoon or two. And I'm like, cool, that was delicious. Thanks. The other thing I think people don't realize is your insulin sensitivity changes when, you're, huh. when your estrogen levels go down. We know that. We've known that for decades. When you go into menopause, you'll see people tip into pre-diabetes mm -hmm. and full diabetes. I think 40% yes. of people have pre-diabetes. I am one of them, actually. So I don't know if you've had struggles with sugar. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was on that borderline for a while there, but now I've trained myself. When I start to feel those cravings, I drink water. Lindsay was saying you, you have to be conscious of what you're eating because you're eating less. And so you want to make sure that you're making really sensible nutritional choices. So about fiber, about good fats, about protein, and then just also eating things that you enjoy. And fiber is so important on a GOP one, mm -hmm. as I've learned being on it for a period of time, but I agree with that. And the food noise being just doled is mm -hmm. incredible. Has anyone tried timed eating? Have you heard of it? Yeah. I mean, I had looked at kind of the, the intermittent fasting where you try and eat your food mm -hmm. within a certain period of time. I think it is almost more natural too, like yeah. to be able to eat that way when you have a, when you are on a GLP-1, because I don't necessarily wake up starving in the morning. When estrogen decreases, our insulin sensitivity gets worse. We know that. That's why we go into prediabetes and diabetes. And it's been shown that just allowing your body to not be getting calories for a while, so being hungry, actually helps mm -hmm. your insulin sensitivity. So it helps your metabolism overall. And I know you've changed your workouts, actually, to try and help as well. Yeah. I had been very avoidant of strength training. Like I just would be like on, if I could do cardio solely, that's, it, that's what yeah. I would do, but I have to, I know I have to switch it up. Yeah. Do you do any weight training? Am I, I calling you out? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was one of these people that loves working out. I just, it's not really something that I've found joy in. Remember that this eighties when it was all about jogging and aerobic mm -hmm. activity and you just old-fashioned jump rope the old jump rope yeah because you strengthen your arms as well as getting the cardio that you're seeking did you have the headband i did <laughs> i still have you the did. headband i had the headband so yeah to this still day have still headband. have some i went to bally's fitness with my mom with like all of the mirrors everywhere and all the machines were yeah, shiny was really crown. pretty i remember those days the message to be active was good but really being strong actually changes your metabolism it mm. also just keeps you from being frail and 
hopefully enjoying life, I think. Um, did anyone get frozen shoulder? Have you ever heard of frozen shoulder? I've had a lot of issues with my shoulder, not so much frozen shoulder, but my shoulder and my wrist. And when I've my gone wrist. to the doctor, they're yeah. like, oh, that's probably just like repetitive stress from work. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now it makes me wonder about kind of this whole systemic inflammatory response in the body and menopause. If you take hormones, you're less likely to get it because mm -hmm. basically estrogen is kind of an anti-inflammatory. So you're less likely to get frozen shoulder or plantar fasciitis, which is when you're, the balls of your feet hurt. Sometimes runners get that. Yep. So think about estrogen like as an anti-inflammatory. So... Kathleen, how do you stay so beautiful? What do you do? <laughs> What's your exercise regimen and your diet? I'm still working on it, just like we mentioned. Um, but I, I've increasingly been concerned about my prediabetes, right? Yeah. So I tend to focus my supplements and my diet on managing that. Mm -hmm. I think other people have different risk factors, right? So if cholesterol is your issue, that might be your issue. So for me, I do a lot of high fiber I am forcing myself to do exercise every day and starting to love it. Uh, I'm eliminating high sugar snacking and I, I am obsessed with high fiber because fiber actually slows down absorption of food so you don't get the sugar high and sugar lows. It kind of makes it more even keel. And then I do hormones, right? So I do like uh, hormone replacement therapy. I think it has helped. It actually lowered my hemoglobin A1C by a bit. So that's part of my regimen too.